Hello and welcome again to Crime Chronicles. What's something people don't know about the Miriang case? Everybody is looking for justice, but what happens when the system fails? In the quiet town of Miriang, South Korea, a dark tale began to unfold. It was a place where everyone knew each other, or so they thought. The tranquility of this seemingly serene community was shattered by a series of events that would shock the nation and draw global attention. It all started with a group of high school students whose lives were intertwined in ways that would soon reveal the hidden depths of human cruelty. The crime that emerged from their interactions became a mirror reflecting the societal, legal and psychological repercussions that can ripple out from a single incident. As the details of the crime came to light, it challenged the perceptions of law, order and justice in South Korea, pushing the community to a tipping point. The Miriang case was not just an isolated event, it was a chilling saga that left a profound impact on everyone involved. In the following sections, we will delve into the intricate details of the incident, the immediate and long-term reactions both within South Korea and internationally, and the broader implications it had on society. Each piece of the story provides critical insights into human nature, societal structures, and the quest for justice in the modern world. In the quiet city of Miryang, South Korea, a series of harrowing events began to unfold in 2004, which would later be known collectively as the Miryang case. This involved a group of at least 41 male perpetrators and 33 female victims, most of whom were underage. The victims were subjected to repeated sexual assaults, which were often filmed and distributed, compounding the violation with blackmail and public shaming. The perpetrators, including both teenagers and adults, exploited their social connections and technological tools to coordinate their crimes and shield their activities from the law. This network of assailants not only highlights the pervasiveness of their planning, but also the disturbing ease with which they executed their plans, leveraging both physical and digital realms to perpetrate and conceal their actions. The immediate aftermath was one of confusion and disbelief. As details began to emerge and the media picked up the story, the public outcry grew exponentially. Yet the initial handling of the case by local authorities was criticised for its lack of sensitivity and urgency, which only fuelled the growing distrust and anger amongst the citizens. This phase set the stage for a nationwide debate on legal reforms and the protection of minors. The public reaction to the Miriang case was swift and severe. Across South Korea, there was a palpable sense of betrayal and horror as the details of the case became public. Protests erupted in major cities, with citizens demanding justice and better protection for children and teenagers. These demonstrations highlighted the collective trauma and the urgent call for societal change. In the wake of this scandal, there was a significant shift in how South Koreans viewed their judicial and law enforcement systems. Confidence in these institutions plummeted, prompting calls for reforms. The case became a catalyst for a broader discussion about the societal norms and practices that allowed such a tragedy to occur, including the role of patriarchal values and the often dismissive attitudes towards victims of sexual crimes. Educational institutions too were forced to confront uncomfortable questions about their role in protecting students. The case led to increased efforts to educate young people about sexual consent and safety, and schools implemented new programmes aimed at preventing sexual violence. This represented a significant, though painful, step forward in addressing systemic issues within the educational framework. The role of the media in the Miriang case was complex and multifaceted. On one hand, journalists played a crucial role in bringing the atrocities to light, ensuring that the public was informed and that the victims' stories were heard. This visibility was essential in mobilising public opinion and pushing for legal action. However, the media's approach was not without its pitfalls. In their zeal to cover the story, some outlets crossed ethical boundaries, with sensational reporting that sometimes compromised the dignity and privacy of the victims. This aspect of media coverage sparked a debate about the responsibilities of journalists in reporting sensitive issues and the impact of sensationalism on public perception and victim welfare. Yet, it's undeniable that the media's spotlight was instrumental in amplifying the call for justice and reform. It forced authorities to act 
and helped shift public discourse towards more supportive attitudes regarding victim rights and the need for systemic changes. The media thus served as both a catalyst for justice and a mirror reflecting the society's flaws and strengths in facing such challenges. Section 5. Legal Labyrinth. The Judicial Response. The judicial handling of the Miliang case was a journey through a legal labyrinth marked by public scrutiny and legal challenges. Initially, the response was criticised for being too lenient on the perpetrators, many of whom were minors themselves. This sparked a national debate on the adequacy of the legal system in dealing with juvenile offenders in serious crimes. In response to public outcry, the government took steps to strengthen laws related to sexual violence and the protection of minors. This included harsher penalties for crimes involving underage victims and the distribution of illegal recordings. These legal reforms were aimed at closing the loopholes that had allowed the perpetrators to exploit their victims with relative impunity. Furthermore, the case prompted a re-evaluation of procedures for handling cases of sexual violence, including the training of police and judicial staff to deal with such sensitive issues more effectively. The aim was to create a more victim-centred approach that prioritises the safety and dignity of survivors, ensuring that they receive justice without additional trauma. Section 6. Echoes in the Community Psychological and Social Aftermath The psychological and social aftermath of the Miryang case was profound. For the victims and their families, the road to recovery was fraught with challenges. Many suffered from severe trauma, which was exacerbated by the public exposure and the stigma associated with being a victim of sexual crime. Community support systems, including counselling and support groups, became crucial in helping these individuals rebuild their lives. The wider community also felt the ripple effects of the case. There was a general sense of mistrust towards institutions supposed to protect the vulnerable. This led to a stronger community engagement, with locals banding together to support the victims and advocate for safer, more vigilant neighbourhood watches. Moreover, the case sparked a national conversation about mental health and the importance of providing adequate psychological support to both victims and the broader community. It highlighted the need for societal healing and the importance of addressing mental health issues with the seriousness they deserve, promoting a more empathetic and supportive community environment. The Miriang case did not just resonate within the borders of South Korea. It drew international attention, highlighting global concerns about sexual violence and the protection of minors. Countries around the world watched as South Korea grappled with these issues and many took it as a cautionary tale, prompting them to re-evaluate their own policies regarding sexual crimes and victim protection. Internationally, the case was often compared to other high-profile incidents of sexual violence, such as the Delhi bus rape case in India. This global dialogue emphasised the universal challenges in combating sexual violence and protecting the vulnerable, and it spurred international cooperation in addressing these issues. Furthermore, the Miriang case influenced global media protocols on reporting sensitive issues, encouraging a more responsible and ethical approach. It highlighted the power of media in shaping public opinion and policy and underscored the responsibility that comes with it, fostering a more conscientious global media landscape. The lessons learned from the Miriang case have been manifold. On a national level, the incident catalyzed significant legal and educational reforms aimed at preventing similar tragedies. It served as a wake-up call that prompted the government, legal bodies and educational institutions to take stronger stances on sexual violence and the protection of minors. These changes have had broad implications for Korean society, encouraging a shift towards more open discussions about sexual violence and the empowerment of victims. There is a growing recognition of the importance of victim support services and the need for societal attitudes that support rather than stigmatise the victims. Globally, the Miriam case served as a reminder of the pervasive nature of sexual violence and the need for a robust international response. It has influenced global norms and practices regarding the handling of sexual violence cases, contributing to a more unified and stringent international stance against such atrocities. The Miriang case bears similarities to several other notable incidents around the world, such as the aforementioned Delhi bus rape in India and the Steubenville High School rape in the United States. These cases, while geographically and culturally distinct, 
share common themes of systemic failure, public outrage, and eventual societal and legal reforms. Each of these cases has underscored the challenges in handling sexual violence allegations, especially involving minors, and has highlighted the often inadequate initial responses by authorities. However, they also demonstrate the power of public outcry in driving legal and societal changes, showing a universal demand for justice and protection for the vulnerable. Analyzing these incidents together allows for a deeper understanding of the universal challenges and potential strategies in combating sexual violence. It emphasizes the importance of learning from each other's experiences and supports the development of more effective global strategies to prevent and respond to such crimes. The Miriam case, with its dark revelations and subsequent societal impact, serves as a critical reminder of the ongoing challenges we face in ensuring safety and justice for all members of society. It highlights the need for continual vigilance, reform and education to protect the most vulnerable among us from such heinous acts. As we reflect on the lessons learned from Miriang and similar incidents around the world, it is clear that there is much work to be done. The path forward must include robust legal frameworks, comprehensive education on rights and safety, and a strong societal commitment to supporting victims and preventing future atrocities. In conclusion, while the Miriang case has been a dark chapter in South Korea's history, it has also been a catalyst for significant positive changes and a beacon for global awareness and action. The journey from darkness to light is long and challenging, but it is a necessary path that we must continue to tread with determination and compassion. If you found this video intriguing, be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends who enjoy delving into the most spine-tingling true crime stories. Stay tuned for more captivating explorations of the unknown. Let's go. Uh